Can't you just feel it? The conflict is becoming apparent in our culture. It reminds me of those words of John Paul II. We're now living in the final confrontation between the gospel and the anti-gospel, between the church and the anti-church, between Christ and the antichrist. And if we don't choose to know God's word, to believe God's word, to follow God's word, we're gonna be a sitting duck for all kinds of confusion, all kinds of disorder. Those are really important choices that people have to make. And these choices are difficult. Who am I gonna marry? What kind of life am I gonna live? How am I gonna raise my kids? What am I gonna do with my time, my talent, and my treasure? And I have to make a choice today. Jesus says to each one of us, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. The question is, do we want it? Welcome, friends, to another week of Choices We Face. I'm Peter Herbeck, and today it's with great delight that I welcome our guest, Dominic Aneo. Dominic and his lovely wife, Jenny, and family are from Ontario, Canada. Dominic is also a member of the Board of Directors of our Canadian Corporation and has been a tremendous support to our ministry over the years. Uh, and we're, I'm delighted to have him here because he has really, I think, a very important story to tell about his own spiritual journey, but also how the Lord led him to the depths of prayer which all of us are called to, but also gave him lots of wisdom and insight and understanding how to help people take very simple, practical steps to be able to have conversations with God. Welcome, Dominic. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's so good to have you. Uh, there's a lot we're gonna talk about regarding the whole, the, the development of what you've done with prayer. But let's start at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about you know, your background and uh, how you came to know the Lord, your spiritual journey. Yeah. So. Yeah, born and raised Catholic, um, received all the uh, sacraments, but, um, you know, through high school, university, early marriage, um, really wasn't a part of, of, of my life, per se, in, in an intense spiritual way. I mean, we went to Mass, but um, more uh, waiting for it to end and bolt to the car and catch a kickoff for one o'clock kind of thing. <laughs> so it really wasn't a big part of my life. And then about 30 years ago, um, my wife joined a Bible study. So she started to read the Bible all the time. She started to listen to preachers on TV and tapes and, and then started calling friends and talking about the Lord all the time. And, you know, quite frankly and honestly, I, I was really uncomfortable with it. Uh, just not something I was used to growing up, not something I saw or participated in, and I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I was really glad that she was kind of enjoying it and growing and, and really enjoying it and stuff, but I didn't really participate. Um, but, but at that time in my life, I was, I was struggling. Uh, it was about the early 90s now, uh, about 30 years ago. And, you know, um, I had some sports injuries that I needed surgery for. My dad ended up with cancer. He died at a very young age. And um, I was working in IT. IT was booming. We were working overtime and uh, a lot of extra work, a lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a lot of get it done on time type of thing. And, I really just started to um, struggle physically, mentally, emotionally. I, I started to get into some bad habits and uh, bad thinking, and it, it was a struggle for me. Meanwhile, uh, Jenny is, is kind of really starting to come alive, and our relationship starts to improve, uh, and I had absolutely not, <laughs> nothing to do with any of that. So how did it improve? Like, what do you mean? You know, she, she just started to, to love more, better. I mean, uh, I mean, I think we, we didn't really have marital issues per se, but she seemed to kind of care for me, kind of tend to me more, kind of give me a little bit more attention. And, you know, ultimately, uh, she, she, as she tells her version of this story, it was because she was reading the Word. Mm -hmm. and, and the Word was, was kind of training her, informing her on, on how to deal with in marriage and other people in general. So, yeah, so she, she, she was really growing and, and, and I was struggling. And then one uh, night, uh, Saturday night actually, August 1993, hmm. never going to forget this night, um, she was watching a tape uh, about a minister preaching on Pentecost. And she, and she pauses the tape and she says, Dom, you know, I think you need to come down here and watch this thing. Right? So I, I sure, I'll come down and I watch it. And, and uh, you know, the preacher talks about, um, I think it was John 16, you know, and the apostles were a little freaked because Jesus was, was telling them that he was going to leave. Yeah. He says, don't worry, I'll send one and he will, uh, he will give you power from on high. And then he talked about um, 
you know, what the transformation Peter went through in Pentecost, how he was afraid and hiding. And the Holy Spirit comes and then he's like, you know, courageous flamethrower kind of guy out in the streets preaching the gospel, right? And, and, and the preacher says, if you want this transformation, if you need this power from on high, then just say this prayer. Um, Holy Spirit, I give you control of my life. Come, take control, do what you need to do. And, you know, uh, at that point in time, like I said, I was, I was struggling physically, mentally. I, I was kind of getting a little bit desperate. So mm. I'm, when he was speaking, it, it was just pulling me right in. And um, so I thought, what do I have to lose? I, I said the prayer, right? Holy Spirit, take control of my life. And, and I must admit, I felt a little goosebump or something there at that yeah. moment in time, but nothing like, ex, ex, yeah. you know, spectacular. But the very next day, the very next day, it, it was almost like, and I didn't understand this, right? Because um, I didn't really know too much about the Holy Spirit. Um, so the very next day, um, uh, it felt like he was right there with me, mm-hmm. like right next to me. There was this constant voice or this constant kind of, challenge to some of those habits uh, I was involved in, whether it was drinking or, or language or et cetera. Um, you know, I kind of sensed that that's not, uh, that's not good. Yeah, he, he, he awakened the awareness in you of the advocate that he promised to send that would be, will give you help, will be at your side. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and then at work, you know, um, I was in a steel company, aggressive language there, an aggressive guys all the time and yeah. I was working in IT and and swearing a lot but you know I couldn't get those swear like Monday morning this is a couple days after the prayer right I couldn't get those swear words out of my mouth <laughs> JCJD and I felt like this voice constantly saying wow. not to do that and I felt like the the Holy Spirit saying to me I, I didn't even know really too much about the Holy Spirit per se but you know lift that guy up uh, in the meeting room across the table whereas I was thinking you know What's that guy talking about? But, you know, lift him up, uh, give him some credit for that. It was this constant sense, right, for about a week or two weeks that I couldn't shake. And again, like I said, I didn't know too much about the Holy Spirit. When I started to kind of struggle and Jenny was kind of going on this great trip, unbeknownst to her, I started to study, um, you know, what, what is she really learning? So I started to read. I started to get into some apologetics because, you know, the computer science degree, as a scientist, if you will, I needed I needed evidence. I needed proof. I needed to know that God was real, the Bible was real, that Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead. And and I did all that type of study and ultimately in my bedroom one night made a conclusion that, you know, oh my goodness, this story is undeniable. This Jesus lived, he died and he rose from the dead and I believe it and I said a prayer. You know, I I believe you exist God and and you know, I love you kind of thing. But nothing in my life changed. Nothing changed until that moment when Jenny called me down on that Saturday night and I said that prayer. That was months after I made this conclusion that it was all real and genuine and true. Nothing changed until, you know, she called me down and I said that prayer for the, about the Holy Spirit to come into my life. And yeah, so we went from there. How did things change at that point? I mean, you had that two, you, you call it two weeks. I mean, did something happen at the end of the two weeks that you mark it as two weeks or just kind of that's the way it's always been since? No, I think... Yeah, actually, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of sense him all the time. Um, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, 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 those bad habits, uh, cold turkey done, all of them gone within two weeks. They, they just did not exist in my life anymore. And, and, you know, ultimately down the road, you're tempted again. You're tempted again to sure. drink. You're tempted again to do some of those other things. And, but it was, it's like he's there, right? Um, I mean, you know, so what happens after two weeks is we start to investigate. <laughs> so what is actually going on here? How does this thing work yeah. uh, with the Holy Spirit? So we started to learn more about the Holy Spirit and the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit. We started to read scripture more. Like me, we got intense together after that two week period of time. Uh, started to learn about theology, started to learn our catechism. And once we got it, once we kind of understood this was not just about getting into heaven, right? There was a fullness of this life that we could experience, right? And, and we wanted that. We wanted to experience the full Christian life, right? And, and, and everything that came with it and all the power of the gifts and everything about it. So, I mean, we went to town. We, we, we tried to learn as much as we could. And once we got it, in terms of we felt comfortable and confident in it, and it started to be confirmed by other people, we wanted to get into ministry uh, pretty much right away. 
So what did that what did that shift into ministry look like? Now here you've got you're married, you have a family, you've got yeah. a very high powered job, very very yeah. successful at what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You're encountering the Lord in a, in a living way. He's starting to take hold of your life because you yeah. gave him permission to do it. Yeah. And this very busy guy who has all these responsibilities, now all of a sudden you yeah. want to get involved in ministry. Where where'd you find the time? How did like what ended up happening? Yeah. Uh, you know, I was working uh, long days, uh, started a business, IT project management consultant business, consulting business, and was going really well. But this um, desire to share what we learned and yeah. what we were learning, it, it, it just, it was so strong. So, I mean, weeknights, weekends, and it was just a labor of love. I mean, it, it Well, where did you go? What did you do? Like, who did you minister to? Was yeah. it in your parish or what, what happened? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I, I actually... Uh, investigated what I could do right away. And I, I didn't have any theology background or theology uh, training yet. So about all I could do was get into youth ministry. They would take anybody <laughs> I guess, at that point in time, right? So, I mean, I start ministering to youth uh, in, the, in the parish, and then we did a, a second parish. And then, you know, uh, for a while, four kids from four parishes were coming to, to our youth group. I started to speak uh, uh, to, to assemblies and high schools. Um, you know, Jenny started to teach around at the parish. In the parish, we started doing marriage preparation. I actually led something called spiritual development nights or uh, discipleship nights. Uh, the pastor was great to let us do that. And he said, yeah, go to town. So we did. Um, you know, joined the leadership team of a, a large diocesan charismatic prayer group. So, um, you know, it was growing in every way imaginable. It was, it was a wonderful time. I found, uh, you know, your ministry and a lot of Catholic teaching on TV that we could learn from and from radio and whatnot. So, I mean, it was really, it was really great. Growing in the power of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, ministering, laying hands on people, seeing wonderful things happen. It was amazing. And it was just this constant growth, right? But, but eventually, um, you know, I started to sense that something was missing. There was, there, there was more. Like, I mean, I wanted to really have a relationship with, with the Father. I mean, it was great to, um, to feel him, you know, in praise and worship, and you kind of feel his presence, and you feel that peace and, and that joy sometimes. And it was great sometimes in ministry to feel the power of the Holy Spirit work through. So, I mean, I felt and I knew he was present with me, but there was this deep desire to, to just, like my dad passed away at a young age mm -hmm. from cancer, like I said, and I think maybe that had a little bit to do with it. And I just desired a father again. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I didn't desire a father just from reading about him in the Bible or whatever. I, I wanted to talk uh, to him. I wanted to converse with him and um, speak. Like I'm, I wanted a real deep, real relationship. And that, and that really started to kind of feel like, um, you know, a restlessness. Uh, I, I just felt like something was missing all the time, that there was more in spite of the fact that we were busy and ministering and mm -hmm. business was growing and, and, and life was kind of good from the earlier challenges, right? And about that time, um, uh, Rolf Martin here from Renewal um, started um, releasing tape series on the great spiritual masters, the prayer masters, Teresa of Lisieux, Teresa of Avila, Catherine, Francis de Sales. I mean, prolific uh, amount of these uh, tape series that he released um, that took these very complex topics and, and, and books and, and, you know, shrunk them down to, to really accessible tapes. And I was really busy with our business and I was driving a lot and um, I was listening to these tapes all the time. I mean, I had them playing all the time. And every time he issued one, I got the tapes, put them right back, right in right away and listened to them. And, you know, um, uh, I realized I mean, he's teaching about spirituality, right? And it's, it's massive and holiness yeah. and it's massive. But there's one consistent theme, right? That was to, um, to, 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 to grow in your spiritual life and your holiness. You needed to, to have this type of daily, like consistent, intimate relationship um, with God and with Jesus. More conversational, more dialogue based. At least that's what those great saints and great prayer masters were teaching, right? And uh, I mean, I wanted that. Uh, every tape I listened to, the more and more I wanted that, right? So, I mean, I went on a, on a, on a search. Uh, I, everybody who taught about prayer, I, I read it. Any tape I can find, I listened to it. Any, any book I could find, I read it. And, and to tell you the truth, um, you know, it's, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do. It, it's dry. Yeah. It's dry, yeah. It's dry, yeah. you know. Um, nothing seems to happen, and, and, and then it's distracted. 
um, you know, whether it's uh, work or family or game seven of the NBA finals, I mean, it, whatever, there's all kinds of wanderings and randomness happening. So it's very distracted. So it's actually, it was very difficult to start to do. Yeah. All right. And then, you know, um, there was a lot of complexity I found in the, in the writings, right? Not complexity per se, but a lot of different terminologies, right? Some, one, one master would say contemplation, another one referred to as meditation, prayer of quiet, prayer of recollection, prayer of union. There's so much terminology. I've, right? I've had that experience of just reading some of the, the yeah. same feeling like, yeah. wow, there's a lot here that you have to kind of keep, you know. Yeah, and Are you saying the exact same thing he's I, saying or she's saying and they're, they're slightly different or the same, so I know yeah. exactly what you mean. So, so then maybe one or two of those mornings, I, I felt like, wow, you know, I think I felt the Lord today. And I, 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 I think I actually, he talked to me. But then the next question is, I don't think I'm doing it right. That couldn't have been the Lord, right? <laughs> it yeah. must have been my head. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you really don't know, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it kind of bugged me. It's a bit of a shame, right, that something so amazing would be so difficult to learn. But, um, yeah, so, um, you know, I, I, I kept at it. And um, I was leading these uh, spiritual development nights, right, at the yeah. parish. And invited a priest from uh, a neighboring diocese who apparently did talks on prayer to come on over and speak uh, at our parish about how to, specifically, how to converse or how to dialogue with God, right? And what that sounds like. And, and he taught- To actually be in conversation with yes. God. And so yes. that, that's, the, that's the key thing, right? So he's, that's the first time you heard somebody talk specifically about it? Yeah, yeah. like okay. back and forth. You say something, he says something. You hear what he says, you respond, he responds. Like a genuine conversation. That really genuine happens? Genuine dialogue. Yeah, man, it happens. <laughs> it does. So and what did he teach you guys? What, what did he? He taught us um, the uh, Ignatian uh, meditation or imagination techniques. So he, he put us in the gospel story of when the, the apostles were in the boat uh, with Peter and Jesus was on the water and called Peter to walk on the water. And he puts us there and he kind of takes us through this reflection. And then he tells us, this is what the Lord sounds like right? It could be words. Go, stay. Um, yes, son, that's for you. No, son, um, I love you, son. It could be a picture of something, a person or a people or a place or a sun or a sky, whatever, or an interior feeling or, or um, like a new peace or a joy or a strength or a physical feeling, um, you know, goosebump or heat. And I think you mentioned that your you feel a light pressure on your chest when you pray sometimes. Yeah, so, sometimes, or, yeah, like yeah. I just know he's present and I'm right there and just feel this kind of gentle yeah, amen. pressure there. And often it happens, or the times it happens, excuse me, It's I feel like he wants to just reassure me that he's present, but also he wants to say something. Yeah, amen. That's what it feels like. Exactly. Yeah. And or just promptings in the form of memories, um, ideas or thoughts and he said, that's how we speak. There's no other way for him to kind of come in other than he appears physically, which happens to one in every So time. he's speaking to us through our senses in different ways. Is that true? Is it, is it that simple to say he speaks through our five senses and then even beyond that he can speak to us? Or? I, I like to say it like this, Peter, and that's true, uh, but it's definitely not uh, for the vast majority of us something audibly we're going to hear in our ears. Right. It's, okay. it's more like what I like to call um, uh, a definitive heart language, if you will, mm -hmm. with, with these tones. Uh, that these tones make up the language that he uses uh, within our heart. It's not something, again, we hear audibly, but something we, we sense within our hearts. The, the words, the pictures, the, um, the interior feelings, the physical feelings, the thought, the memory of the idea. And yeah, to, to engage with it, to recognize it, to recognize it's him, and then to engage with it, right? So that's what he taught us. And, um, uh, you know, it was a game changer. It was an absolute game changer. It just simplified, right? Uh, you know, some very complex uh, teachings and, like I said, some terminologies that were... It's like he, he gave a simple methodology to help you concretely step into a, real, a spiritual reality that the Lord wants us to live in and to engage in. Yeah. You know, he said, my sheep hear my voice. Yeah. They know my voice. Yeah. You know, he says, the, my, um, you know, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And he's going to lead you in all truth. He's going to teach you everything. Yeah. I, everything. He's going to remind you everything I taught you. Amen. And so I think that it's such a foreign experience, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a rare experience. Let me put it this way. It doesn't yeah. need to be. But I think for many Catholics that uh, having a two-way conversation with God doesn't happen very often, precisely because what you were describing, like 
how, do, how does that happen? First, even, is it possible? Is it presumptuous to think yeah. that it's going to happen with me? I certainly read it in the life yeah. of Catherine. I heard it. Yeah. The pastor say something on a Sunday. We're celebrating Trees of Lesu, yeah. you know, and I understand it. But I, I kind of just leave thinking, wow, those people are amazing. And boy, it'd be great to have, you know, to know God the way they know God. And what you're saying is, is that's what the Lord wants for all of us. Maybe not exactly like those particular saints, but that's the direction he's leading us into to that deeper union with him in conversation with God I mean, as our I, Father. I believe it's meant to be and um, the ordinary experience of Christian prayer life, to, to converse, to dialogue. I don't think it's meant to be extraordinary. I don't think we have to be perfectly holy, great saints to have this kind of experience. I mean, in early in the prayer life like that, a lot of it is conviction. A lot of it is, um, you know, son, that, that sin's got to go. Yeah. You know, son, you can't be conversing with people that way. You know, yeah, son, the Lord's cleaning up the yard. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, but, yeah. It, it, you know, when you're, when you're getting it directly from him, it, it really helps uh, to, to go a little quicker. So you, you began to do it, began to yeah. change your life. Yeah. And, and just a moment, I, I kind of want to yeah. step back just for a yeah. second to say, here you are, uh, again, married, raising a family, very busy career, built your own business. You've got to run your own business. You've got employees. You've got all that stuff. Yeah. And then your heart falls in love with the Lord. Mm. And this is something that is true about men across the board. No matter how busy men are, when they love something, they're going to find time, whether it's hunting, fishing, going to ball games, doing whatever it is. Nothing wrong with those kinds of things. But yeah. it's not often where busy, talented men, whatever, think, uh, there's more for a relationship with God. It usually gets reduced to something like, I need to be virtuous. I need to be a good person. Mm -hmm. I need to be responsible. I need to be honest in my career. But this dynamic of what you're talking yeah. about, which is what really sets the heart on flame with fire. Yeah. And, and the love of God begins to burn and your life changes so dramatically yeah. in that context. Now, you experience that and now you've created something that you want to share that practical wisdom yeah. with for everybody. Why don't you tell us a little bit about about that, if you don't yeah, know. I mean, uh, after that experience, I start after that teaching, I started doing it every day, and it became for me, by far. And Jenny was kind of going through the same thing, so we we're both experiencing the same thing. The most important, the most critical thing for me in my day. So I scheduled my day around prayer. Hmm. Prayer came first, and like I teach in the course, um, prayer is a time-saving activity. It's not a time-draining activity. That's an important distinction because most people think it's a time-draining activity. The fact, yeah. the fact that I, I went to meet the Lord every morning like that in this kind of attempt to be intimate and dialogue and converse with Him, you know, I could tell you countless stories of meetings canceled, meetings added to my agenda that made my day go smooth as, as possibly can be way more than, than, than not, right? And I attribute that 100% totally to the fact that I've given the Lord my time and he's gonna clear some things out of, my, out, of, out of the path for me, you know, or put some things in the path for me. I completely believe that. I think Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, or in all your days, I think if you go into the Greek there, in all your ways, he will make your path, acknowledge him, be intimate with him, know him, and he will make your path straight. So, I mean, I took that mentality into prayer. You know what, Lord, I'm giving you time because I want to be here. I know you're going to take care of the rest of my day, right? So, I mean, I, I, I just started giving a lot of time to that, and I loved it, and it became the most satisfying, most delightful, most fulfilling part of my day. Uh, and like I said, I scheduled my whole day around it. And, you know, as it was confirmed by my spiritual director, I started talking to I was excited about it. I would talk to people about it in the vestibule at church or at a conference or at a, even in some of the ecumenical groups I was participating in. And I'd say, hey, what technique do you use? And they'd say something like, I, I say my prayers in the morning, you know, and mm -hmm. well, what do you sense and what do you hear? And I kind of say my prayers in the morning, <laughs> you know, and I got a sense really quickly that this was not something that people, a lot of people did. Um, and uh, to me, it was, a, it was a shame that something this life-changing, this, this impactful, this life-giving, this, this um, fulfilling, delightful, I mean, everything was so misunderstood, if you will, or maybe underused. Mm -hmm. So again, being a, a teacher and a coach, I just uh, thought I needed to do something and started to teach it to youth and it worked great with youth, started teaching it with adults and it worked great. I mean, they, the feedback would be, I didn't know I could do this. I heard the Lord for the first time in my life it was the most amazing thing. One woman said to me, you know, uh, I've gone to prayer group, I've gone to Bible study, I've gone to all these things, but this was what I was looking for. I just wanted to be with him and talk to him, right? 
So uh, COVID came and uh, gave me a chance to put it together into a uh, five simple five-step video package, um, how to dialogue with God in less than 30 days if you want to kind of follow the, the program we have or you can take as much time as you want. So, I mean, I've, I've walked through it and it's, friends, I just want to tell you, it's beautifully done. It's uh, just the video is minutes long, roughly. Yeah, There's yeah. content there. There's the best of Catholic tradition present yes. in it. Uh, scriptures, the lives of the saints, and it's amazing how simple the process is. Mm -hmm. And so how can people plug into it? How can they find it? How can they get it? And start following some of your good teaching on it. Yeah, they, um, www.dialogueprayers.com slash C. Uh, and that'll get and you we'll put it we'll put it up on the screen friends so that you can see it before the program's over and could they if all else fails could they like google you and find it uh, uh they, they could find it that way as well okay wow time time has just flown by uh yeah. dominic I, I knew it would and i just want to i just want to honor you as a brother you know somebody who has served us so well in renewal ministries your wisdom your guidance your friendship uh but i'm i'm always inspired when I see a married man, I've said this a couple times on the show, a married man who's got a busy career and he's raising his family, not only, you know, do fulfill certain duties, but have a deeper growing hunger for God and the more, you know, and just pursuing God. Because what God really wants from us, brothers and sisters, is that relationship of love, of communion in love, of conversation in love. That's why he, your temple, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit, and it's the Holy Spirit who comes to help us, you know, praise in our hearts and says, you know, Abba, Father, teaches us to know God as our Father. So thank you so much for being with My us. Pleasure. And friends, we want to offer you again Ralph's booklet, Join in the Resistance. There's a lot of good wisdom here about how to walk in the power of God in a difficult and challenging time in the world. We'll send it out to you. Just call the 800 number. Um, you can also uh, download, I want to encourage you to download our Renewal Ministries app, all our videos, YouTubes, booklets, everything is there for you. Make it easy and accessible for you. But until next week, this is Peter Herbeck and Dominic Eneo saying, let's open our hearts to the love of our Father for a two-way conversation that'll change your life. Join the resistance. I'm only talking about resisting one thing, the lies of the devil working through our corrupt culture that are intended to drag us and the whole human race to ruin. There's no way of explaining the radical changes in our culture and even in our church without recognizing the work of the evil one. This booklet identifies some of the main lies we encounter and gives us tools to recognize and resist them. As scripture says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So ground yourself ever more deeply in the personal love of Jesus and the absolute truth of his teaching Ask him for the courage and wisdom needed. And from that place of trust and confidence, join the resistance.